You are listening to the Penwise Podcast, a podcast for writers who wish to kickstart their writing into high gear. Pantser or Planner, Episode 3. Okay, last episode I explained the writing process to you, just in case you needed a refresher, or if you're a new writer. Now you have that solid foundation you need to leap forward into your new life as a writer. Today's podcast will cover the pros and cons of being a pantser, you jump into your writing, right by the seat of your pants, or a planner, or as some say, plotter, who plans and detail the full manuscript before you get started. It's a good idea to to decide how you will prepare to write before you get going. Nothing like setting yourself up with excellent writing habits from the get-go. You can save yourself a lot of heartache. As I settle into my own writing, I need to make a change myself. I'm going to find the middle way. I will plot out my manuscript, leaving room for some free reign. My nature is as a pantser. Let me tell you how that worked out for me. It didn't. It was like free-falling from space. Ever watch those YouTube videos, the skydivers? At first they fall straight down, then veer off in one direction, maybe spin around for a while, straighten out only to veer off in another direction. Granted, they at least knew where they were intended to land. I too could see the end of my story, but I couldn't begin to tell you how I'd get there. As a result, and like the good ADHD woman I am, I veered off in all kinds of directions, with my writing ending up in a land far, far away and quite lost. When I read it back, what I had written, I was very bummed out. I realized I had taken off on a tangent that led down a road to a different story, or should I say stories. How do I salvage this? I would ask myself again and again. Do you remember that definition of insanity? Keep doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different outcome? Mm-hmm, enough said. Now you know why I need to change up how I proceed with my own writing. That is how the middle way is going to be born into my writing life. No more writing by the seat of my pants. But there's another issue for me. I tend to overfocus, especially with outline. That gets me in trouble, too. What to do, what to do. Ah, find a combination. I can learn how to outline better using creative writing. I'm so impatient, though. Are you? I'm the type that just wants to get to the good part. I just want to jump in there and write. However, as Dr. Phil would ask, how's that working for you? It's not. It hasn't. And that reminds me of that definition for insanity again. All right, I get it. I need to suck it up and outline can't be that bad. I did have to teach those things to my students. If I taught my students how to outline back in the day, surely I can figure it out for my own fiction. Remember those traditional outlines we had to learn in school? But you know, the first time that great big numeral one, followed by the thesis statement, drop down a line, indent four spaces, and write the letter A, followed by your supporting idea or fact, drop down, hit enter, indent four spaces again, and write your next supporting idea a fact. Well, in creative writing, creative nonfiction, sci-fi, etc., you can outline the very same way. Old numeral one can be the theme of your story. The drop down and indented sections can be the actions for that scene or chapter. The next one down can be conflict and so on. Well, the first time I tried this, I got stuck after completing the first three chapters. By breaking the book down into chapters, I got lost when I looked down at my outline. Hmm, how do I show the beginning, middle, and ending? I think my chapter's okay, but it doesn't show a beginning, middle, and end for the book as a whole. Did I tell you I'm dyslexic as well? Let me tell you, that doesn't help. I'm determined to figure it out, though, and I should mention, being dyslexic isn't mandatory for getting lost in your own outline. Okay, there is a way to sketch out a workable outline for those of you who struggle like I do. I do get impatient and want to just jump into that writing, but it makes the writing life so much easier to have a good plan. In fact, generally speaking, there's nothing like a good plan with backup plans. 
think I have discovered a way to outline what will work for me. I'll sketch out the whole story, meaning book. Below is, is the fictional example. Okay, Roman numeral one, the initial exposition. The story takes place in a family-owned restaurant in western Massachusetts. Drop down, indent, letter A. Xavier is introduced as chef and owner. Drop down, indent, letter B. Yolanda is introduced as the manager of the front of the house. Drop down, indent, C. Zale is introduced as sous chef. Drop down, number two. Inciting action. Drop down, indent, A. Xavier is found dead in the freezer. Drop down, indent, B. Zale is arrested for his murder. Drop down, indent, C. Yolanda must prove Zale's innocence. Enter. 3. Rising action. Yolanda is stonewalled by the cop in charge. That was A. B. Zale gets moved up to a maximum security prison by a paperwork mix-up. 4. Climate. Yolanda must fight the system to find justice for Zale. A. Zale must find a way to get to work where Yolanda is and keep himself alive at the same time. B. An old friend of Zale's turns up who just happens to have worked for the courts and tells Yolanda what to do to find Zale and get him back. 5. Falling action. Zale discovers a childhood friend is in the cell next to his and he knows the ins and outs of the prison system. B. Yolanda makes headway and discovers who the real murderer is. 6. Resolution. Yolanda solves the murder. The garde manger chef did it, and she learns where Zale is and helps get him out. B. Through the assistance of his friend, Zale meets with the warden just after the warden received a call about the screw-up. Yolanda, C. Sorry. Yolanda and Zale marry and buy out the restaurant. D. All live happily ever after. Okay, not the greatest plot, but you get the gist. Now I've sketched out this outline, and I might write another that will break down these sections further into chapters. I think this will solve my problem. If you don't like the method, don't worry. There are other methods. There's another type of outline called flash outlining, because it illuminates a small but important part. For example, Try writing a brief paragraph on what will happen in your first three chapters. In this way, you're fleshing out a little at a time as you progress through your story. You can also use a free write to help you explore a bit more in detail. This one allows you to ask yourself questions as you go along and add in as much detail as you would like. And another exercise you can do is to start your writing time with a conversation with yourself. I learned this one from David Morrell, author of First Blood, that book was the one that became a Rambo series in film. Every day when he sits down to write, he asks himself how he's doing and how the writing is going. If he's having trouble, he'll ask himself questions that help him get started. He will ask, what do you think about what will happen if? Or, how about if such and such happen? He asks a lot of what if questions, which are perfect for unlocking your brain, waking up your imagination. Try using one of these techniques or some combination and let me know how it went. You can send me an email, leave a voicemail, or leave a comment in the comment section of my blog at penwise.net. Let me know if I can share your response on my next podcast. So until next time, this is Hannah Lura signing off. Penwise Podcast is a weekly podcast and can be found on iTunes or your favorite RS feed. You can follow me on Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. You'll find links and show notes at my website, penwise.net. That's penwise with a Z.